Hello, everyone. This is Sean from the Soccer Nostalgia blog. I have the pleasure to interview Mr. Davy Naylor, the administrator of EnglandStats.com. Mr. Naylor has appeared multiple times on a podcast discussing the history of the England national team. With England and the United States due to meet next month in the World Cup, we'll take a look at the previous meetings between the nations. This interview is separate from the podcast series. This video interview will serve as a companion piece to a written blog presentation on the head-to-head -head encounters between England and the United States. Hello, Davey. Always a pleasure. Good morning, Sean. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start off by discussing the very first match between the nations, which is the most talked about one. So this is the 1950 World Cup match on June 29th at the Belo Horizonte in Brazil, where the Americans won 1-0. It's the most referenced match in the history of U.S. soccer because it is regarded as one of the greatest upsets in World Cup history. What is the English view on this match? Is it considered like a fluke result or a great disaster? Um, both. <laughs> um, um, I, I, I very much doubt there are many people alive still who will remember this match, but uh, it certainly is. Uh, I think a lot of English fans would know about it. Um, uh, the younger fans would know about it. Uh, there are there is a bit of context one has to 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 uh, to be able to tell this story of this game. If you, if you don't mind indulging me for two of minutes, of course, go ahead. Um, England at the time, the FA uh, at the time. Um, I mean, it was it was still run. Well, it was still run in fusty old men um, in smoke filled rooms. Um, so in the nineteen fifties, um, they. Uh, the kind of guys look down on things like uh, the the arrogance of, of, of they look down on on the World Cup. They they didn't enter the first three, and it was only after the Second World War that they thought, that, well, we 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 best show the, these these foreigners how to play our game. And it was it was really was that kind of attitude. Um, so much so that um, they'd sent Stanley Matthews, their best player on a goodwill tour of Canada prior to the tournament. And he and his boat turned up late. He missed the first game against Chile, which England won comfortably 2-0. Um, but, and also at that, this point, England did have a manager at this point from 1945. Um, but prior to that, there was no manager. It was, it, it, it was selection by committee. And then the players did the tactics themselves. In fact, there was no tactics. It was a WM formation. Everybody knew what they were doing. And they just go, went and played the game. This, this, this went on for 45, 50 years. Um, when Walter Winterbottom came and managed the team from 1945, he was in charge of everything from training to tactics to um, uh, what the players ate to um, booking hotels and booking flights and, or bu booking, booking uh, a steam passage to South America for the World Cup. The only one thing he was not in charge of was the very the most important thing, which was team selection. That was in, still in, in the matter of the FA Select Committee. In fact, it wouldn't be till Alf Ramsey in 1963 wrestled that control back. You could say that he was the first proper uh, England manager. So here we are in, uh, in Brazil. Um, England had won the first game without their best player. And so it came down to the only... FA Selection Committee member pres present, who was a Mr. Arthur Drury from Grimsby, to select the team. And he decided that although Stanley Matthews what had arrived by now, he didn't want to change a winning team. And therefore, he went ahead and didn't play his best player. Now, <clears throat> that's the English side of the game. Now, the American side of the game is much different. Um, they had qualified for a World Cup. Yes, they were amateurs, mostly amateurs, uh, but they prepared. They were fitter, they were faster, they were better fighters. These are words of Stanley Rouse after the game. Um, they just uh, uh, made the went for it. They, they played a great, obviously, they, they didn't uh, progress uh, past this game, but they were playing England. Um, 
the, one of the best teams in the world. Um, the, actually, according to ELO ratings, they were first in the world at the time. And of course, you know, the, the progenitors of the game. It was a massive thing for the United States. And they trained well. They played well. The English thought this tournament was kind of like, you know, uh, how... I, I can't quite describe it. Maybe, however, how the the uh, uh, UEFA Nations League is 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 today. It's kind of like nothing more than a kind of like friendly competition, and they were soundly beaten by a better side. England did play really badly. They hit the woodwork several times, um, but it was a humiliation by, to be honest, a, 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 a better a better team really on the day. I mean, if they played it again, England would probably win, run out five nil winners. You know, nine out of ten times they would probably won. But the United States on that day played out of their skin. Uh, the, the 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 tackling by by the centre backs, um, the, the the goalkeeper um, Borgi was 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 um, outstanding. And of course, Gaysons who 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 gets the goal, um, uh, um, it was outstanding. They were all brilliant. So it. it, it it is a fluke, but it's not a fluke. I mean, you know, it was always going to happen because of the way that the, the two t- sides went into the game. It, w- it was it was laziness and apathy uh, uh, and arrogance on one side with, you know, a, a, a team that wanted a win. Uh, uh, yes, a, a very much um, inferior team, but they just wanted it more. They wanted they they turned up. The other team didn't. That's the story of the 1950 World Cup. Incidentally. England play Spain to go through to the next round um, a couple of days later, and they lose 1-0 again, even with Stanley Matthews in the side. So maybe the Matthews factor uh, uh, didn't, didn't really matter. But that was that was the game. Yes, it, it is in England. Um, it's uh, I, I think we, we try to sort of like not think about it, I think, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, we should mention that uh, Walter Winterwater actually wanted to select Stanley Matthews, but he was overruled. He was overruled by Arthur yeah. Drury, yes, absolutely. Yeah. One man from the FA Select Committee. Right. And, um, selection. This is this is how it was in those days. But they 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 they, they thought that was, you know, well, you know, we'll we'll send Arthur. Arthur will sort it out. Of course, you know, Arthur knew nothing about um team selection. Yeah. And uh, a couple of points to uh, mention uh at one point during the match, the American goalkeeper, Borhi, he actually scooped back from his goal line to catch Stan Mortensen's header behind the line, but the referee didn't see. It. So who knows with VAR and everything, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I, you're all right. It is a fluke result, but that's not to, to denigrate the, yeah. the performance of the United States and the way that the English, I mean, there, there were other factors in play. And there were a lot of factors. The referee was awful. The pitch was awful. Um, England hit the woodwork on multiple occasions, but the US had had a lot of attacks as well, and and and, and the English keeper, um, Bert Williams, was was very busy as well. I mean, the the US could could have could have scored could, could have scored more, but um, it was it was looking at the talent of the team. I mean, I'll just give you a quick rundown. Bert Williams had gone. Alf Ramsey, who who would become England manager after what was 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 playing as right back. Jack Aston, Billy Wright, the legendary uh, Wolves captain, Laurie Hughes, Jimmy Dickinson, Tom Finney, um, you know, uh, Wilf Mannion, uh, Roy Bentley, Stan Morrison, Jimmy Mullen. I mean, I mean, that, that's a team. Yeah, that's a yeah. team. And, and 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 you read out the the US team sheet, nobody would have heard of. Them. But they are legends now. These right. guys. Yeah. So Joe Gaitens's goal in the thirty eighth minute, uh, like we mentioned, is one of the most reference goals in US World Cup history. And at the end of the match, the jubilant Brazilian crowd entered the field and, you know, held the American players on their shoulders. Right, There's a yeah. famous photograph of Joe Gatons on uh, on the shoulders of fans. And uh, another thing to point out, there's a famous photograph that for decades was um, uh, erroneously referenced as uh, Joe Gaten's goal. There's this re- there's this photograph that shows, uh, I guess, Bert Williams and Joe Gaten's in front of, and you see a ball uh, at the net. But if you look closely, the ball is actually behind the net. So well, yeah, I, I, I know I know where this comes from. There is there is footage of the game. Um, yeah. it's, it's very sparse footage, and of course there's there is only one goal in the game. Right. Um, you see a shot come in, and Gaten sort of like you know glances off his off his head, but then you don't see where the ball goes, and right. so that was erroneously for for years and years and years 
um, thought that what was how the goal was scored. But according to actually, um, um, I'll, I'll read you what the Liverpool Echo um, uh, wrote um, uh, for the goal. The Americans hung stubbornly onto the lead they gained in the 30th minute through a fine 20-yard shot by the Argentine-born centre-forward Gatins. He sent the ball crashing into the corner of the net through a crowd of players, which Williams perhaps unsighted. So, yes, it wasn't um, a lucky goal, as a lot of people assumed. You know, a lot of people assumed it glanced off the back of his head and went into the net accidentally. Uh, but it wasn't. It was, it was a uh, good shot, perfectly and, good goal. And in... Uh, so- in 1996, uh, the famous Canadian uh, journalist, uh, football journalist, Colin Jose, he met the, the American Walter Barr in 1996, who told him that that was not the correct photograph. And yeah. a photo was found in an American soccer yearbook. And uh, Bert Williams was actually tracked to confirm this. So for 46 years, this photograph, and even today I see it in a lot of places that that photograph being referenced as the goal, but obviously it isn't. It's just an no, action not. shot. If you look very closely, you see it's the ball is behind the net. But uh, right. okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So interesting that 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 has that has existed for so many years that just one photograph and somebody's assumed that that's the goal. And right. so then everybody's referenced that, uh, it's, and then it's taken, you know, forty uh, odd, forty five years for somebody yeah. to track down that that's not it. Well, I mean, it's sad that we don't have um, film footage, but uh, of, a, of a World Cup, you can imagine. Can you imagine a World Cup without extensive right. camera angles and replays these days? But uh, that's yeah. what it would like. In, yeah. In so, so this was actually um, it was an actually a whole article in World Soccer about this. Uh, this photograph and I've included it. I will include it in the oh, yeah. links for this uh, blog. So uh, for the rest of the 1950s and into the next decades, uh, the natural order of things in terms of football was established as England faced the United States uh, in a number of occasions in the, well, three times in the 1950s, twice and the 1960s once and uh, defeated, uh, inflicted heavy defeats. In 1953, uh, in New York City, um, England won 6-3 with Tom Finney and Nat Lofthouse score, have scoring doubles. Uh, on May 28, 1959, in Los Angeles, England won 8-1. And uh, Bobby Charlton scored a hat-trick in his match. Ron Flowers scored twice. And on May 27, 1964, again in New York City, this time England won 10-0 with Roger Hunt scoring four goals and Fred Pickering three goals, Terry Payne twice, and Bobby Charlton again. So, And these were all end-of-season visits to United States. And uh, so I, I presume uh, most of these matches are f- not as remembered or more or less forgotten, I'm assuming, except by historians, I would think. I, 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 I suppose so. Uh, the first two, the, the 53 encounter was, um, the first two are, 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 are on baseball diamonds um, uh, um, in Yankee Stadium and then uh, the yes. one in LA, was the old Wrigley Field, which I, I believe is, is not there anymore. Um, the third one being in New York again, in Downing Stadium, which is on um, Randall's Island, I believe. Um, I think yeah. there is another sports stadium there now. There, but none, no, no, um, uh, Wrigley Field's not there, and Downing Stadium's not there. Um, yeah, so th- these are end of season tours. Uh, the the England teams uh, going to to America, South America, maybe playing Mexico, Uruguay, Brazil, those type type places, and on the way home. They're playing a, a, a kind of like an end of the season. They're, they're all in, in uh, May and June. And the US team for these are, are you know, they are, they're friendly teams. They're, they're, they're picked from um, whoever, I guess, the coach can, can scramble together. It's not, it's not a competition. So you can see it, it reverts. Back in 1950, there was a purpose behind the US team because they'd, they'd got to a World Cup. And they wanted to actually do something and 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 make their, their names memorable, and then they did. Um, but 
in the summer of 53 and 59 and 64, even probably at the 85 match, which, which is the next one where England won 5 0. Um, the team is not, I mean, this, this is really the, 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 the nadir of the US uh, men's national football team. They, they don't really start becoming a decent team really till the late, nine, late 80s, um, early 90s, when there is a semblance of organisation. So in a way, the, the US team has regressed so much. I mean, you know, in 1964, the 10-0 humiliation is, is, is a thump, absolute thumping. Um, it's, it's one of England's um, biggest um, wins, and especially away from home. Um, but the team was, was a, a, again, um, amateur um, guys. And they're, they're actually selection from, you know, it, it seems to be all over the world as well. Um, without and they were cobbled together in the last last minutes. Um, so it really is. Um, they are they are they are thrashings. Uh, to be honest, um, as as you said, the 1953 uh, match played at Yankee Stadium. Um, England had trouble in the first half because they were playing on the diamond. They were attacking the diamond, which is always you know. Um, w- w- one end of the field is the outfield. The other end was where the diamond was, and they just put sand over the top, or, or you know, got rid of the the, the the pitcher's mound. So it wasn't you know an ideal surface. So they decided that they want to um, um, uh, play uh, in the first half, attacking this. And of course, they only they they only score one goal in in that half, and then you know um, the next, then they score five at the other end when they have better sailing. Th- this match was. Incidentally, um, um, it was it was delayed from the day before because uh, there was torrential rain. So they played it under floodlights, the very first England game to be played under floodlights. And it was arranged because of um, um, celebrate the coronation of Elizabeth II, which had um, gone on, I believe, a couple of days before. Um, the next time they, they meet was at, at, in Los Angeles and Wrigley Field. Again, England struggle because they are playing on a diamond. Um, they only score one goal in the first half. Um, actually, United States score first through Ed Murphy, not Eddie Murphy, Ed Murphy. No relation, I don't think. Um, and uh, during the second half, England score seven in the second half uh, with um, Bobby Charlton getting a hat trick. Um, again, under under uh, under under uh, floodlights uh, this game. And then um, Billy Wright's last cap, by the way, his... Um, his, his um, I can't remember how many he got in the end, um, 105, I believe that's right. Um, and then um, in the 64 game, which was nothing but a, but an absolute humiliation, this was played on a proper football field. Well, a soccer field, I guess, on Randall's Island Downing Stadium, it was called. And England scored after two minutes and didn't stop scoring. Um, uh, uh, you know, Hunt and um, Pickering both got hat-tricks. Um, even Bobby Charlton, the substitute, managed to, to, to score... Um, it was it was quite a mauling, um, to be honest. Um, and then things, you know, a, as the USA team got more organised, the results started getting a little bit better. Yes. So it would be another two decades before England faced the United States again. And uh, England were on tour in the June of 1985 to play in the Ciudad de Mexico Cup or Azteca Cup tournament in Mexico, which we've covered on our podcast. So along the way, they had a stop over at Los Angeles to face the United States on June 16th, 1985. This would be another relatively heavy win, 5-0, with uh, Gary Lineker and Kerr Dixon each scoring twice. And uh, how is this match remembered? Uh, Not very. It's not, not, um, I mean... Uh, as as England statisticians will probably remember it. again, this is this is so prior to World Cups, um, uh, countries organised test events the year before, and uh, Mexico organised two really quite odd competitions. Uh, it was called um, Azteca Two Thousand and uh, Ciudad de Mexico Cup, um, and and they overlapped. Uh, Mexico right. played in both things, but uh, but England only played. Uh, one game in each, and it was really weird. They, they were playing um, Germany, and I believe Italy. I Italy. It was Italy. Yeah, um, yeah. Eng- England had had beaten West Germany the day before three nil, which it was a rarity. But this is because the West Germans only got off the plane and hadn't acclimatised themselves to, to the um, to the altitude. Um, they'd only got off the plane a couple of days before, so there was a reason why England won that one. And then yes, they went to uh, LA at uh, went to LA uh, the Coliseum. 
And a beta. Again, this is a very uh, uh, amateur. I mean, you, you, there is no. I don't really know the history of um, American um, national uh, the, the, the the internal soccer system, but I knew that they the, the, the football league had collapsed the, the, right. the, the, had, uh, around in the eighties, and it wasn't the, the one that is, is today wasn't set up, I think, is, is it early 90s? I can't remember. To, to, you, you'd be able to correct me there. So this is kind of like um, the professionalism of the US team is, is not um, necessarily, they're not, they're not, they're, they're still, you know, amateur, semi-amateur players coming on. Um, um, and um, a lot of people are, are, are picked from all over the, the place. There's a chat ball in El Salvador, Scotland, and, and um, uh, you know, um, West German player, uh, all this. So they're, they're still trying to cobble together together a team. Um, the next decade. Well, so a, we're a actually college player. players. So oh, actually, right, okay, right. right. I see. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, that 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 will again. You you see the 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 the, the cobbled together nature of the USA. These friendly teams where England have, have, have always come off the back of a, of a tour. Not, maybe not a, not a successful tour. I mean, they normally went to South America, which they normally lost um, a lot of the games. So, the, But at least they, they, they were a, a, a full unit and professional players coming off uh, a, a, an end-of-year tour, whereas these US teams seem to just be sort of like picked uh, very, I know, the, the best that they could do at the time. Um, it, it's not until the next decade and the next match we'll see that, that, that the US team actually starts to become um, a lot more organised and a lot more professional and actually win a game. Yes. So we come to the decade of the 90s. And uh, USA has been... Um, uh, the United States uh, will be the host of the 1994 World Cup. So in 1993, uh, perhaps the, the second most memorable match between the nations takes place on June 9th, 1993 at Boston as part of the U.S. Cup. The United States defeated England 2-0 in another upset win. Please discuss the English reaction before I discuss the American one. Okay. Um, so this is, again, it's another United States Cup uh, is designed as a test event prior to the US um, World Cup in 94. This is played in June 1993. Um, England send a team under Graham Taylor. And this is one of his worst. If, 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 if he was still alive, I think he would probably rank this a lot, along with the, the, the game against Holland. Do I not like that? I would uh, say this a, is his nadir. I would say yes. 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 I, I think so. Yeah. It's certainly um, it, it, the Independence uh, head, headline is England's new low as US pile on the misery. England had been losing a long time. Don't forget that they they'd only just um, they've been beaten by Norway um, uh, um, two nil. Um, only a couple of days earlier, on the on the second of June, they'd been uh, pretty dismantled by uh, by a Norwegian side, a very very good Norwegian side, who would go on and qualify um, along with along with the Netherlands um, instead of England for the nineteen ninety four World Cup. So it was it was a pretty humiliating state of affairs, and of course, you know, Graham Taylor doesn't last too too long too much longer. Um, you know, the the following year. Um, they they are not, don't qualify for the World Cup, and he is he is he is uh, he is sacked. Yes. So, but, but, but sorry to, to to interrupt. Sorry, but it's still a good team. I can give you the team: Chris Woods in goal, Lee Dixon, Tony DiRigo, Carlton Palmer, Gary Pallister, David Batty, Paul Ince, Nigel Clough, Lee Sharp, one of my favourite players, Les De- Les Ferdinand, Les Dennis. I was going to say, I don't think he ever played. But <laughs> Les Ferdinand, John Barnes, and Ian Wright and Des Walker are uh, our substitutes. So it's not a it's not a bad team um, if you look at those players, but they were just outclassed by by an excellent um, US team with some um, some um, uh, household names in the team by this point, like um, Roy Wegley. I really know Roy Wegley um, uh, um, from his time at Sheffield Wednesday, I believe. Um, I think that, I think that's right. Um, uh, Blackburn, uh, yeah, Blackburn, Blackburn yeah. is it? Um, and um, Jeff Agus, everyone will know. Alexi Lalas, uh, who um, I, I saw only recently pulling balls out of the hat for the <laughs> Women's World Cup draw, uh, I saw um, doing his 
doing his uh, Alexi Lalas routine, mm-hmm. or, uh, and and Kobe Jones. I mean, the, the, Thomas Dooley. I mean, there are yeah. uh, even Tony Miola in goal. These are the John Hart. John Hart, exactly. Tab Ramos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's they're becoming household names now, and, and a lot of these players are playing um, in England, in in Europe. So yeah, um, yeah in fact. Dooley scores the first goal on a header and Lala scores the second in on a header as well. Yeah. So, so um I guess um like you mentioned, this US Cup was like a dress rehearsal one year ahead of the World Cup. And uh for the Americans, uh this was uh, this was considered um a step forward in terms of uh preparations for the World Cup. It was a very morale-boosting win uh, one year ahead of the World Cup. And you have to remember, at this point, there's hardly any press coverage in the United States on soccer. But the following day, you, newspapers actually cover this match. So this, uh, uh, this win uh, actually um, did get the attention of the American press. Yeah. So it was very important as far as, uh, you know, raising awareness and such, like I said, uh, here, year ahead of the World Cup. So, uh, and again, it was a rare win against uh, p- powerful, you know, f- football nation. And uh, yeah, so it, it is looked upon as one of United States' greatest wins, especially in this 90s period. And but obviously for Graham Taylor, uh, it's his lowest point, and he would be mercilessly attacked by the media until he resigned by the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, in, interestingly, England it, it, during this uh, United States Cup in '93, uh, England uh, finished bottom of the group with one point. Interesting. In the next game, they actually draw one all uh, with. With Brazil, Brazil, yes, um, and then but then are are, are beaten two one uh, by um, by Germany in the final game and finish bottom of the group below the United States and Brazil yeah. and Germany winning that that competition. Um, so it, it, it's it's a, a lingering thing with the England team at this point that they're not doing very well and they're getting embarrassing results. Um, which I, I would I would I think it, that that would be considered very embarrassing back home. I remember it. Uh, um, I, I would have been at college at that time, um, and I remember being embarrassed by that um, and and shocked really, um, but not surprised. Uh, so uh, the sides met a year later for the first time on English soil at Wembley on September seventh, nineteen ninety four. Uh, this was follow a year. F- well, this was a few months following a relatively successful World Cup for the United States, and uh, on this day at Wembley, England won two zero with Alan Shearer scoring twice. And uh, what stood out for me was the the English press coverage. There was an air of like like. This setting the record straight to show the defeat in 1993 had been a fluke. And uh, what are your thoughts on this match? Um, I don't, I can't say I remember this match too well. Um, Shearer scores two goals in the first half, and it's that settled it. Um, yes, there is a modicum of revenge, I guess, but this is this is now Terry Venables has taken over. This is his fourth game. Uh, he's taken over from Graham Taylor, and, and th- there is a sizable shift in in, in personnel. Um, David Seaman has, has taken over. You've got uh, the rest of the team: Rob Jones, Graham Lasso, Barry Venison, uh, Gary Pallister, Tony Adams, David Platt, John Barnes, Shearer, uh, Sheringham, and and Anderton uh, come into the side. Uh, so it's changed quite a bit from from the, the previous. Yeah, but but the US team have, have again got some household names that you know. Brad Friedel uh, plays in goal. Jeff Goose, you've got Alexi Lalas playing. Thomas Dooley is playing. Claudio Reyna, a lot of people know. Uh, Kobe Jones, Ernie Stewart, um, you know, Joe Max Moore are all names that that, that that people might might know. But this is, I guess, 
this is, I, I wouldn't say it's so much as setting the, the record straight. This is uh, the, the, the United States' first visit to Wembley. And I think they're just overawed by the, the, the whole thing. I don't know whether they, they travel well, uh, they, they play good away games. They certainly, um, you know, at this time where we're playing good home games, as you said, they had a great World Cup, got to the second round, I believe. Is that right? Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, this is, this is, I, and the difference seems to be, to, to be Shearer, uh, he, he has a cutting edge um, that, um, that, that gets the two goals that are required in this game. But I don't, I, I can't say I remember this game uh, particularly very well. Yeah, so uh, we have to remember that the American team was less than match fit for this right. uh, okay. this match. Uh, John Harks and Tab Ramos were missing, and Alexi Lalas had a poor match. In fact, he was booed every time he touched the ball. <laughs> uh, and uh, like I said, it was a lethargic display by the Americans, and Again, the English press were very critical of the display of the American team. And as like I mentioned, there seemed to be this residual anger from the previous year. And uh, <laughs> like the Sun uh, headline uh, called it a load of yankers. Oh, really? Uh, Did that? Classy, classy. Yeah, Nigel Clark of the Mirror said, hopefully we can bring better opposition than USA to Wembley. Bora, that's Bora Milutinovic, said that it was privileged to play at Wembley. It certainly wasn't a privilege to watch them. No, well, that, that, people have short memories of, of only a year before yeah. when yeah. the tables were completely turned, and it was it was uh, England who were lethargic um, in '93. Right. The US were by far the much better team. So people have short memories, don't they? Yeah, yeah. and David Lacey of the Guardian said that. By the end of a one-sided game, the folk heroes of the World Cup were beginning to resemble the part-time punch bags American teams used to be. And uh, finally, uh, Jeff Powell of the Daily Mail uh, said that half of Bora's team had hardly played since the finals. The other half can hardly play at all. And he also kind of went into... uh, criticizing Alexi Lalas uh, because you have to remember Alexi Lalas had become the symbol of the U.S. team and Absolutely, because yeah. of it, he was a personality eccentric yeah. personality and all so some people uh, I guess took swipes at him because of that and um, I, I, could, I could understand why people would do that he's very eccentric um, he right. still is um, he doesn't have the the big beard and the the big hair anymore, but um, he certainly is still Alexi Lalas. I mean, you right. know, he's he's a, he's a one and a kind, and and long may he continue. I quite like him, but um, right. I can understand why people he rubs people up the wrong way. I should think, although I'm not, I'm, I don't actually have any quotes, but I should think he his his quotes after the 1993 game. He he would have certainly uh, um, not um, he butted up the the, Engl- the English Englishman so much. He would have been re- very very. Right. Alexi Lalas about it. I, I should, shouldn't wonder. Yeah. So that would probably be why he got booed when, when he came to Wembley. But it's yeah. a shame because I quite like him and he was a great player. All right. So the the takeaway I guess from this match is the uh, and is most of the hostile press reception that yeah. seem to yeah. Yeah, uh, again, it, seems, it seems that the US team doesn't seem to travel well uh, at, the, at this at this point, and that, that, that certainly. During this game, they weren't very well prepared. So right. a lot of the criticism is, you know, we should be England should be playing again. It's that arrogance, isn't it? You know, England right. we should be playing better opposition than this. But you know, it, it, it's you know maybe maybe they could have prepared a little bit better. Maybe if if if, if the guys there is some criticism you could lay at the US team. Yeah, but I I, I don't think it's that fair to lay into a, a, a team like this. They were. I believe at the time. I mean, there were well, there, there there were world rankings at this point. I think it only just started. It was in in its infancy. Um, but they um they were they were forty eight in the ELO ran, rankings. They were forty eight. Um, yes, why why the game was scheduled? I don't know. Um, I, I guess of course you have to remember as well that England at this point were not qualifying for Euro ninety six because they were hosts. 
and had automatically qualified. So the first, Terry Venables, for the first 20 games of his managerial career, is playing friendlies. So sometimes it's difficult to try and arrange friendlies against team because they're playing competition. So um, maybe this was uh, one of the one of the um, games that they could arrange. And why not? United States were were a good team. Um, re, re, I mean, they'd beaten England the, the year before. They'd had a reasonably good World Cup. Why not um, arrange this kind of friendly? And just on the day, um, England ran out um, comfortable winners. And, and I think the criticism is a bit harsh on the US team, to be honest. Yeah. So now we come uh, to the millennium era. So the sides met twice in the two thousand, the decade, the first decade of the two thousands. So uh, again, uh, these were kind of on un- an eventful end of season friendlies. So in two thousand five, in Chicago, United say, I mean, the England won two one, and in two thousand eight. At Wembley, England won 2-0. Uh, anything stands out from these matches? Well, the first one certainly does, because I was there oh. um, in Chicago on that day. Me and a friend of mine had gone on a um, went on the tour. We, we'd gone to see... We, we, we have friends in, in, in Chicago and in Toronto. So we went to Chicago to watch this, went to Toronto, and then, and then came back via New York to watch the Columbia game, which was um, happening a couple of days later. Um, so what I remember from this game was uh, Kieran Richardson scoring a delightful free yes. kick um, in the fourth minute and then um, scoring a, another one um, um, before the interval. Um, and it seemed to be a very one-way thing until Clint Dempsey got a, uh, got, a got one back uh, near the end. But um, England um, held on for the win. Uh, yes, end of season friendly. It was, it was good fun. Out there, it was a lovely day, and uh, you know the 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 English expats or the English tour tour, touring guys were intermingling with the US. It was it was a lot of fun. I I remember there was a lot of beer drunk. Let's just say. Yes. And uh, the 2008 match is just uh, preparation for the Euro. Well, oh, England didn't qualify for the Euros. I forgot. That's right. Yes, we we'd um, we we'd failed to qualify. Yes. so just, a, just a regular friendly, yeah. This is just a regular friendly. Uh, I think it had already been organised. So this is one of right. the fellow's first games. Um, um, yeah, and and uh, Terry and Gerard got the goals. Um, but again, you've got uh, you've got some some uh, classic names that that that, that are on the um, Tim Howard's in goal, Clint Dempsey. You've got um, Carlos Bocanegra. Um, Eddie Johnson, you've got um, Brad Guzan. It, it comes on in a second half. Freddie Adu, the 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 American Pele, who who I, I was hoping I'd see a couple of years earlier um, um, uh, in in Chicago, but he but he did actually get on the pitch. I did actually see him at Wembley during this game. Um, he wasn't very good for some reason, but he was touted when he was much younger as yeah. the the American Pele. I don't know why. Well, it's a legend, isn't it? Really, what happens to Freddie Adu? I guess. Yeah, but he broke through very young. I think he's like fourteen years old. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. right. So, so uh, now we come to the, I guess, the more significant match in the recent years. This was on June twelfth, two thousand ten, at uh, World Cup in South Africa at Rustenburg. This match ended as a one-one tie. And it will be forever remembered for the England goalkeeper Robert Green's error, who let slip from his grasp uh, Clint Dempsey's long range shot. Uh, Steven Gerrard had given England the lead early. And uh, it's fair to say that without this error, I don't think most people would even remember this match today. What are yeah. your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was the first game uh, for both teams um, in. Uh, uh, the, the 2010 World Cup um, in South Africa. Uh, Gerard gets England off to a flyer after only four minutes. Um, it was a perfect start, really. Um, a great goal as well. <clears throat> and everything seems to be going along very smoothly for England until till a, 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 a disastrous um, um, moment for Green when, when uh, Clint Dempsey's... Uh, 
uh, a shot. It, it just just trundles towards him, and I think everybody will remember what happens. Just goes through his hands and into the net. It's 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 quite. I mean, you know, every time I watch it now, I think, no, he's going to save it. It's so it's such a weak shot. He's going to save it. He can't possibly. Let it, but every time it happens, um, so that that was in the and then the second half seemed to be. Uh, seemed to fizzle out to a one or two. In fact, you could you could say that England's campaign during that World Cup fizzled out. That, that they 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 were held nil nil um, and booed off the pitch against Algeria in uh, Cape Town a couple of days later, um, and also a, a, a meagre one nil win against Slovakia. Uh, uh, Slovenia, them, yeah. Slovenia, beg your yeah. pardon, helped them get through to the um, uh, knockout stages where they where they um, come up against. Um, Germany and the 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 ghost goal, which, oh, yes. um, uh, but then, then you know Germany end up running out uh, four one winners. Don't forget, Rob Green is is not first choice um, 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 keeper uh, at this point. Um, it's it's supposed to be uh, David James, but David James is injured. I mean, the, the, uh, another great team. You've got as you got we got Rooney, you've got Heskey, you've got Lampard, Terry, Gerrard, Ashley Cole. I mean, it's it, there. There was something going on in 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 this camp. I think Cap- Capello had lost the room, basically. That they weren't very pleased with the way that he, he, his his autocratic style, I guess. Um, and it wasn't a very memorable game, apart from the the the, the Dempsey goal. That, uh, Gerard's goal obviously was quite spectacular, and then and then the disaster of of, of the equaliser, really. Um, so, you know. Uh, England hadn't been playing particularly well um, uh, pr- uh, prior to that either, and, and and they were they were touted as 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 could possibly be you know semi finalists as well prior to the prior to the game, but it but it 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 it, 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 it never got going after after the fine start and after after that gaff by by um, Rob Green. It stalled. The whole England campaign just absolutely stalled and never got going at all. Um, I remember the US also went on and got a very, very late um, winner against Algeria, I believe, to send them through top of the group. And I think then they played Ghana, was it? Yes. That's right. Yes. Um, I remember, yes. Um, and 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 actually, that very late goal, England would have um, uh, gone on to play Ghana, but but that uh, that very late Clint Dempsey goal against um, Algeria put US top of the group, um, and they went to play Ghana instead, and England had Germany. Yes. Um, I think I think that they, they, they on goal difference, I think they England and US both finished on five points. Um, so yeah, it was. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, it was it was it was a, it was an awful 2010 World Cup. I I remember being a, a not a very good one for for, for being an England fan. It's so much so. A friend of mine w- went all the way to Cape Town to watch the Algeria game just for that, <laughs> and then came back. You know the the same day, and uh, he got he got he got on TV. I don't know if uh, you cut. It, it won't be very good for the podcast for those people watching on YouTube or wherever this is posted. You you see one shot of him just doing this. <laughs> This this was his reaction throughout the whole of the game. It, it, it was it was it was pretty bad, and he and he'd flown all the way to Cape Town just to watch one game and came all the way back again, and it was it was that game. But anyway, that was that was that was another game. But it was it was an awful campaign which, which started off with um, an, a, a, a really bad howler, um, and I, I guess he will be remembered for, for quite a while. Um, yeah, but but uh, the US team I thought was very good. I mean that they, they 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 did very well in that and and that 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 World Cup and and I thought that they they could have gone a, a further. I think they they lose out to Ghana, you know, uh, some last minute goals. I seem to remember. Um, so that they could they could have they could have done really well. Again, great team, you know, Landon Donovan, um, Clint Dempsey, Jay Demerit, uh, Steve Chirandolo. Uh, Carlos Bocanegra, Tim Howard, you know, um, Stuart Holden, who, who who played in the, in the UK, Josie Altator, you know, some some, yeah. some good names in that team. Yeah. So the most recent match uh, between the nations was on November 15, 2018 at Wembley for Wayne Rooney's farewell appearance. Yeah. And yeah. this was a 3-0 win for England. 
yeah. with Jesse Lingard, Trek Alexander, Trent Alexander Arnold, and Callum Wilson scoring. This was a November friendly that, again, if not for the Rooney factor, there's not much to assess from this friendly. Yeah, it, it, it was, it was, I think it had been already arranged, but you know, don't, you don't forget that Rooney had retired. Um, well before this, but he was persuaded by Gareth Southgate, or, or I, 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 I don't know the conversation whether he was persuaded or he'd asked this because he was playing at DC United at the time, and he he came out of retirement, international retirement, to play this one final game. Apparently, at the request of the FA, I'm reading here, but um, I'm not entirely sure. You know, if he if, if he didn't nudge people saying come on, come and play another game, he came on as a second half substitute and almost scored, which would have been uh, absolutely fantastic because he, he he would have um, uh, that that would have been the the, the perfect um, game. I was I was at this game as well. Um, he and he ended up leaving the field in tears, which which was a, a, a nice way to go. It, 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 there was a little bit of criticism about it. Why why does Wayne Rooney get this and no, nobody else? You know, David Beckham didn't have a swan song. Um, Gary Lineker didn't have one. You know, think of famous. You know, Bobby Charlton didn't really have. You know, these things. Why why are the FA allowing Wayne Rooney to have this thing? I, I think it was a. Nice idea. I, I seem to remember lots of Vox Pops at the time where people go, well, he shouldn't come back. Why? Why? Why should he get this? But I think people are just being curmudgeonly, really, to be honest, because why not? Why not? Why not? I mean, it was, and, and um, you know, it, it was it was a good game. The, the US team um, were, were, uh, were it, I mean, there, there's not, you know, great names. Um, uh, Pulisic maybe is, is the more famous one. Brad Guzan's in gold. I, I, there's not many other names that I, I uh, that, that that your average non-American, you know, follower of, of the um, uh, United States men's national team would know. Um, so it was it was a, it was a simple um, way to send Wayne Rooney off, I guess. So. Uh... The next match between the nations will be at the World Cup on yeah. November 25th at uh, Alcor at, in Qatar. Yeah. What do you expect from this match? Well, um, if anything's to go with the, the two previous World Cup encounters, something has happened and not necessarily uh, beneficial to England. So if anything to go by, um, something will happen. Um, USA have Wales first. England have Iran first. I mean, all all of these games in this group, which I believe FIFA have dubbed the group of death. Of course, they've looked at the rankings and averaged out each group, and they had to decide which one uh, was the group of death. Um, so they've decided that this group B is the group of death, simply because uh, the, the teams involved have the higher average ranking, or well, lower average ranking, whichever way you want to put it. Um, it's very interesting. All the games are England interesting. England versus Wales is an interesting game, of course, you know, being neighbours. Um, um, Iran versus USA is always going to be an interesting game, not necessarily for the football, but for the politics. Um, England USA is a good game. England have not, not played Iran before, so um, looking forward to that. Um, yes, um, um, I'd like to hear from a, a, a US fans' point of view uh, how they think it's going to go because um, I know that the US team have not been playing well of late. You would think that England should win the group. Um, you would then possibly place. Wales or the US um, next, um, but that's not to say that Iran are not a good team because I know they beat Uruguay recently. Mm. Um, so it's 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 going to be very very interesting. It's it's certainly uh, um, um, and and the reward for the person that does um, um, win the group would be a very reasonably simple second round game against uh, the the second place team in. Um, group A, which is one of the easier groups. Don't forget Qatar, the hosts are in that group, but their world ranking is 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 particularly low because they've never been to a World Cup before. Um, the only team really of of, of, of any pedigree in, in in Group A is is the Netherlands, and you would expect them to win the group. So the winners of Group B would have 
<clears throat> possibly an easier second round round game. But yeah, um, I, I think I think we're all looking forward to to the the, the England Iran game, the England uh, US game, the England Wales game. We're all looking forward to that. What's weird is that it's in November. Of course, it doesn't quite compute. I, I caught myself saying the other day, well, we'll have to wait and see what happens in the summer. Of course, right. <laughs> it's, it might be summer in, 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 in Qatar, but it's certainly not. Um, it, 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 it feels weird that, that we, we have to stop the, the Premier League season um, in, in a couple of weeks and then try and start it up again to try and fit in this hackneyed World Cup, which I think everybody's agreed was a bit of an aberration from the start, giving it Qatar Qatar. Um, you know, so um, not not that they they you know with with all the with all the problems that, that, that which I want we're not going to go into, uh, but um, it, it's I think if they had a do over, the F the, the FIFA would probably do it over again and give it to somebody else. I think to be honest, but yeah. it doesn't mean to say it's not going to be a great World Cup. There's some great teams there, and um, the last World Cup was 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 a pretty uh, pretty good. So. Um, let's hope that this one is as well, footballing-wise, anyway. Yes. So, in closing, it seems like since the 1990s and the progression of the American uh, soccer program, as well as having many Americans, you know, plying their trade in the English League in these last couple of decades, this matchup seems to have become a standard encounter with not much drama associated with it, what are your thoughts? Yeah, possibly. I mean, the the only the only way that the two teams could play each other in, in a in a in any kind of a competitive way is it would be in a World Cup, and 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 they have now been drawn together three times um, in in World Cups in the last seventy years, which is which is great. Um, but the, the friendly encounters do tend to be unspectacular. Let's just say um, they're either a, 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 in, in the case of the 60s, you know, one sided matches or, um, you know, in, in, in the case of, you know, the 90s. Well, maybe they've all been one sided encounters, especially the, 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 the two that, that the US have won. Um, so, yes, outside of friendlies, the World Cup games have had a spark of, of interest um, and, and have been memorable matches. Um, so let's hope the next one is memorable um, for for not for, for all the right reasons, not the wrong reasons. Hopefully, of course. Yeah. Of course. And, and and let's hope that that the, the England and the US play a lot more in the future. I, I, I the I, I watch a lot of um, football from the American leagues these days. Um, uh, so the, the the quality of football is 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 quite good, and don't forget there are a lot of. Uh, players from England in 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 the American leagues as well um, um, in M M L M L M L M L S football um, and uh, a lot of American players here in the in the UK so uh, you know they, they are becoming more acclimatized to each other. Yes. So yeah, we'll look forward to that this upcoming match. What 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 what's what your opinion on on the U.S. men's team? Uh, the World Cup. I think that uh, after not qualifying for the last one, I think uh, it's just, just a, a, a positivity with just qualifying for this one. So uh, you have youngsters like Pulisic or Gio Reyna who uh, might uh, excel at the World Cup. So... You know, we'll see. We'll see. It's not an easy group by any stretch for no, any of the teams. No. So no, no, it's not. Uh, it's not. Well, <laughs> you don't sound overconfident there. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. You know, yeah. like we said, there's this whole factor of playing in November. You don't know how all the teams, you know, will cope with that. So it's a strange World Cup uh, yeah. overall. And uh, but it's the same for everybody. I mean, it's yeah. uh, all leagues have to. Uh, I know that the, the MLS league is not the same time as, as the European leagues, but um, yeah. um, but especially all the European players, it's going to be very strange for all of them because all the leagues are going to have to stop right. and, then, and then try and pick up again. Well, but remember, a lot of Americans also play in the European leagues, so that is true, yeah. Is, yeah, so everyone's on the same boat, basically. Yeah, you can say, yeah, yeah. so yeah, we'll see. Uh, so with that, 
I'd like to thank you again for this interview. Uh, I want to remind everyone to please read the main blog article uh, as well for more detail. And uh, this video link is included in the video upload description along with our respective contact information. In addition, um, on the following day, I will upload the compendium with all the lineups, any available photos and videos from the matches. So thank you again. And uh, we'll discuss more next time on our podcast. Thanks for inviting me on and uh, good luck for the World Cup. Thank you. You too. You too. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks, Sean. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.